Okay, so I want to do one last example um, with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uh, and then I'm going to get these notes up online in case you want to look at them. Uh, so here's another matrix. Uh, this one is not symmetric, right? The tra it's not equal to its own transpose. Um, so we're going to work through and see what happens when we try to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors in this case. So get the characters of polynomial first. So x minus 1, minus 2. 0. Remember, we're putting x's down the diagonal, and then we subtract the entries of a. So minus minus 3 becomes plus 3. x minus 2. Uh, 0 minus 3. 0 minus minus 1. Minus 2. x minus 2. Okay. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to um, expand, right? Um, trying to use row operations to simplify usually doesn't get you very far. Um, because you've got those variables to ha that you have to deal with and it's a bit of a pain. So what we'll do is we'll just expand along that first row because at least there's a zero. So x minus 1 times this 2 by 2 determinant, right? We get x minus 2 minus 3 minus 2 x minus 2 um, minus minus 2, right? Remember that in the middle we always put that minus sign in there. Right, across that first row, our signs go plus, minus, plus, always. Okay. So plus sign in front of the x minus 1, minus sign in front of the minus 2. Uh, and then we're going to do these two pieces here. That gives us the second 2 by 2 determinant. So 3, 1, minus 3, and x minus 2. So x minus 1 times, and we have x minus 2 squared minus 6, and then we have plus 2 times 3 times x minus 2 plus 3. Okay? So we start expanding. I'm going to leave that x minus 1 factored out. So x squared minus 4x plus 4, minus 6. I can factor a 3 out, um, right? 3 is common in this uh, in this second term. So we'll factor that 3 out. 2 times 3 gives me a 6 out front. And then I have x minus 2 plus 1. Okay? And now the whole point is that, well, not the whole point, but one of the things that we might notice that makes our life a little bit easier is that's x minus 1. And there's another x minus 1 there. So we can group factor, right? Remember, I, um, I'm trying to choose examples where you can do group factoring or something that makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to work these things out. So x minus 1. And then we have x squared minus 4x uh, minus 2. And then plus 6, right? Um, so that plus 6 is coming from there. Um, okay, so we're actually back to x minus 1, x squared minus 4x plus 4. So x minus 1 times x minus 2 squared. So once again, uh, we have that repeated eigenvalue, right? We have two eigenvalues, right? So we have uh, lambda is equal to 1, and we have lambda is equal to 2. And this one has a multiplicity of 2. Okay, so we want to find the corresponding eigenvectors. Um, so we'll do lambda equals 1 first. And so for lambda equals 1, we're going to do a minus 1 times the identity. And that gives us 1 minus 1, 2, 0, minus 3, 2 minus 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 2 minus 1, so 0, 2, 0, minus 3, 1, 3, and then minus 1, 2, 1. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do is we want to get that down to reduce the echelon form. And one of the things I'm going to notice here as well, we're going to divide that 
top row by two to get a leading one in that middle column. And then I'm going to use that leading one oops, to eliminate those two terms below it. I'm just going to do that kind of cancellation step right away because it simplifies things for me. So I have 0, 1, 0, minus 3, 0, 3, minus 1, 0, 1. Okay. Um, I guess I shouldn't say equals is not quite right anymore. We're doing a row operations. Uh, there's a couple of row operations in there. I'm not labeling them all just to save some time. And so after a couple more steps, we'll get down to there. Okay. And so in this case, if I have if I have a minus i times x is equal to zero, and x is let's say x one, x two, x three. Well, I need x1 equal to x3 and x2 is equal to 0, right? Um, so that x1 equals x3, that comes from this first row, right? That says x1 plus 0 minus x3, um, that would be equal to 0 in the homogeneous system. So x1 equals x3. Uh, that middle row just says 0 plus x2 plus 0 equals 0. So x2 has to be 0, okay? So what we'll do is we'll take... We'll take x to be this vector, 1, 0, 1, okay? And we leave it at that, right? Um, we could get a unit vector if we wanted to, but we'll leave it as 1, 0, 1, right? We choose, choose keep our numbers simple. So we chose x3 to be 1, set x1 equal to x3, x2 is 0. Okay, so there's our eigenvector corresponding to that first eigenvalue. Now we'll do the second, lambda equals 2. So I do a minus 2 times the identity. So this time, I have 1 minus 2, 2, 0, minus 3, 2 minus 2, 3, minus 1, 2, 2 minus 2, subtracting 2 down the diagonal. So I get minus 1, 2, 0, minus 3, 0, 3, minus 1, 2, zero. Okay, well we can see that uh, two of those rows are the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move that second row up to the top. I'm going to divide by minus three to get to there. Okay, and then I'm going to put that there and we might as well cancel a row while we're at it. And now I'm going to add the first row to the second. Zero, two, minus one, zero, zero, zero. Okay. So that's not quite at reducer echelon form. We should divide row 2 by 2 to get to reducer echelon form. Um, but it's probably close enough as far as deciding what our, what our vector should be, right? Because if we say that a minus 2i times y is equal to 0, and y is, let's say, y1, y2, y3, um, well, then we get that uh, y1 is, has to equal y3. Okay, and 2y2 has to equal y3. Okay, so what I might do is if I put, if I put y2 equal to 1, that says that y3 is equal to 2, and that means that y1 has to equal 2. And so that gives me a vector 2, 1, 2, okay, for that second eigenvector. And if we wanted to, we could always go back to the original matrix. Where is it? Way up here. And we could check that if we multiply by 2, 1, 2, um, make sure that we actually get um, what we're supposed to, which is twice the original eigenvector. Um, you know, if you want to make sure you didn't do any mistakes. Let's, let's give it a try. If I do a times y, so that's 1, 2, 0 minus 3, 2, 3, minus 1, 2, 2, I multiply by 2, 1, 2, okay, so I get 2 plus 2, I get 4, I get minus 6, um, plus 6 plus 2, I get 2, I get minus 2, um, and then I get plus 2 plus 4, so I get 4, which is indeed 2 times 2, 1, 2, okay, 
so I know I know that it worked. We could check the other one as well. Um, but here's the thing. Notice that we only get we only get one eigenvector, right? Up to scalar multiple. We we don't get two independent eigenvectors here. We only get one, right? All other eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals two um, have to be scalar multiples of the one that we have. So that's the best we can do. Um, there's just the one. So um, this would be a case where this matrix A cannot be diagonalized, okay? Because there's only one eigenvector uh, corresponding to that eigenvalue of two. Um, and for, for Math 1410, that's sort of where the story ends. Um, let me give you, uh, we'll just briefly um, say, well, what would happen next? Where do you go from here? Um, well, if you don't get enough eigenvectors, uh, then what you do is you look for something called generalized eigenvectors. And so it turns out that what you should do, if you don't get enough eigenvectors from solving solving this equation, right? So we try to solve this equation and we only get one eigenvector and that's not good enough. Well, what you do is you square the matrix. It turns out that there's some general theory that says if you have a non-invertible matrix, um, so you have some non-zero solution in your in your null space, um, sometimes if you start taking powers of that matrix you will get more solutions. So you get the null space gets larger as you take higher and higher powers of that matrix. Um, eventually it stabilizes. And so in this case it'll turn out that if you square the matrix you can actually find a second solution. Um, and so you can solve that, and and then there are some there are some details that we're not going to get into here because it's not appropriate for our first course in linear algebra. Um, but what we would get is we would get we would get the vectors that we have, the x and the y that we already found, and we would get z, and this z would be this so-called generalized eigenvector. And I'm not going to go over how you find it because it's, it's not important for this course. Um, and then, you know, you can set that matrix P, right, to be, you know, this matrix where we put these vectors in as the columns, X, Y, and, and Z, okay. Um, and then you do the, the same kind of thing where you do, you do P inverse times A times P, right. And if your matrix can actually be diagonalized, then what we expect is we expect to get the eigenvalues down the diagonal. And remember, I, I did mention um, that you can always uh, triangularize a matrix, right? Um, you can always get a matrix into upper triangular form. And so it turns out that what happens when you um, do this right when you use the the sort of a certain standardized process for finding that generalized eigenvector um, you can set things up so that you are very close to diagonal and the only thing that's missing or the only thing that you're off by is just above where those twos are on the diagonal just above that the repeated eigenvalue there's a one just off the diagonal there's a one um, this uh, this particular form here this has got a name it's called the jordan canonical form, okay? Um, and that's something that you would see if you go on, if you take a second course in linear algebra, um, like Math 3410 here at U of L, um, you would get into how do you figure out the Jordan canonical form of a matrix. Um, so that's beyond Math 1410, but just in case you're wondering what happens, that's what happens.